Being a homeowner is a big responsibility. And today, I want to show you a checklist that I've created for myself, which is a home maintenance checklist to help me keep track of that big investment. So stay with me and I'll show you all about it. Well, hi everyone, I'm Crystal from A Crystal Clear Life where we focus on planning, organizing, and living a more simplified life. And today I want to share with you a yearly home maintenance checklist that I have created for myself. Uh, and I thought it might just be helpful to share with you. Maybe it would give you some ideas to put on your own home maintenance checklist. You know, just kind of a way to keep track of all those little things that need to be done. Just a little organizing checklist to help keep everything in your home in tip top shape. So let's jump into the computer and we will get started. As we're getting started today, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to everyone who has subscribed. Uh, and if you see something you like today, please go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you have not already. Turn your notifications all the way on so that you don't miss any future videos. And let's get right into this video today. So you see here on my screen, I have my yearly home maintenance checklist. Now, I will start off by telling you that every home is different uh, and the things that you need to do around the place where you live uh, may be very different than what I am showing you here. I just simply wanted to let you know what's on my list and give you some ideas that might help you get started creating your own list. So where did I get started? Well, Actually, I got started on Pinterest. Let's take a look at what I found on Pinterest. On Pinterest, I found a couple of uh, yearly home maintenance checklists that I kind of used as a starting place for me to get the idea of things that I wanted to include on my own. Now, I have lived in my house for over 20 years and I have been able to maintain it without this checklist, uh, but it is really helpful, I think, uh, just to be able to schedule those things and say, now when was the last time we did X or Y or Z? If you have it on your maintenance checklist and you've checked it off, uh, you know that it was done during a particular month or of a particular year, okay? This one I kind of liked. It was broken down by season, so spring, summer, autumn, and winter, and then things that you need to do monthly, quarterly, biannually, and then once a year. And you can see here that if it was uh, monthly, they would check it off every month. If it was quarterly, they would put a dash in the month that they didn't do it and a check in the month that they did. And then down here, they would uh, list all of the uh, single check marks for things that needed to be done once a year, okay? I thought this was a great idea. I liked some of the ideas that they had down here um, and I thought it worked pretty well, okay? All right. The other checklist that I found uh, was a similar checklist, had some similar information on it. Uh, it was a yearly home maintenance checklist, and you see here they had it broken down by months, all right? And then there were little check boxes there that you could do. This one happened to be created by uh, Garrett's uh, Realty Company, which I thought was interesting. Maybe this is something they hand out to new homeowners. Um, I wasn't sure, but I thought that was kind of interesting. And again, I liked some of the ideas that were on this checklist, okay? Then I also found uh, this January checklist uh, that was pretty detailed, and it was by um, uh, premeditatedleftovers.com, uh, and you can find those uh, on the web. And this was very detailed, and I, I liked this idea as well. Some of the information that they have on here I thought was good as well. And so really what I started by doing was taking all of these uh, things that I found and starting to compile lists. Now, the one that I came up with for myself is I really liked the monthly one. So over here, what I did is I simply uh, created my own yearly home maintenance checklist. I keep it in my year long section of my planner. Um, and uh, I created this, as you can see, last August. 
Um, and I just started with, you know, kind of those big 12 boxes that uh, January, uh, February, and March I have at the top, and they are in blue because that's kind of winter months for me. March, April, excuse me, April, May, and June are those greening up months when the leaves come out and things start to grow. July, August, and September are hot months, so I have those in yellow. And then October, November, and December are the changing of the seasons into fall. And so I have them in kind of the orangey red color. All right. So just uh, a table. Actually, I created a table with a three across and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, rows down at the bottom. Okay. And in the top of the table, I just put January and then February, March. And in the second cell or the second row down, I just started adding things uh, to my January list. Okay. And uh, some of these things replace, uh, repeat. So you can see here for February, I have replace AC filters. It also happens in May. It also happens in August. It also happens in November. And actually I have it in every month, uh, just about. Uh, if they don't get replaced, they at least get checked, okay? We have a number of pets that live in our house, and with cats, there is cat hair. So those air conditioning filters need to be checked on a frequent basis, all right? Another thing that I did is I started taking some of those tips from the uh, checklist that I saw on Pinterest, and I started adding them to my own list. For example, Thinking about January right after the holidays, it's a good time to deep clean after those holidays. And you see here that I put a link, uh, and here I put a link to my holidays uh, checklist that I do by week. And here you can see on this week for January, I have things like log gifts received, write thank you notes, record cards received, uh, take the tree down, li uh, list any needs for next year, put away the obvious Christmas things, leave up the winter and add birds and snowflakes. Uh, so I have been starting to take my Christmas things down. I have processed my uh, Christmas cards that I received, although they are still hanging on the door back there. Uh, and the last thing to come down will be my Christmas tree. Uh, it now has lots of birds on it, uh, and I just love the lights at night, and I will leave that up probably through the end of January, okay? So having that link that brings me to this list kind of keeps all my holiday things in one place. Going back to my home maintenance checklist, I also have things here like check the water softener and add salt as needed. Again, not every house has a water softener. Mine does, so that's one thing that needs to be checked. But again, after the holidays, cleaning the carpet's probably not a bad idea. Uh, you know, if you have lots of guests and company and extra food all over the house, uh, just getting things cleaned up would be good. And speaking of extra food, there are a few things in the kitchen that I like to do in January. Uh, one is clean the oven from all of the cooking that's been done from November and December and hone the knives. If you follow me over on Instagram or Facebook, you saw I did a whole uh, post over there about getting the knives honed and conditioning my cutting boards so that all of the wear and tear that they took, uh, you know, during the Christmas season, I can get them back into shape and ready for the rest of the winter. Uh, you know, there's always lots of cutting and stuff to do for soups and that kind of thing. Check the gutters, especially before any uh, snow or ice that's coming, uh, just to make sure that you don't get any ice damming and that kind of thing. And then uh, regards to my own personal things, I like to uh, be one of those people who goes and turns all of their hangers backwards so that as I wear things, uh, I can turn the hangers around and know what I've worn and what I haven't worn. And in that process, anything that is still hanging backwards from last year, that's the time to evaluate. Do I really need to keep this or is this time to let this go because it was not worn at all last year? So a good way to help you with decluttering, okay? All right, and then empty out and give the refrigerators a good clean out. Take out all the drawers, take out all the things uh, from the, the door uh, sections, go through everything, throw away anything that's expired, wipe everything down from the holidays and give them a good clean. 
If you can, you may also want to pull the refrigerator out and clean behind it. All right. So basically a list of things to do in each month. I don't want the list to be overwhelming because I do like to come in here uh, as I am planning out my weeks and put things on uh, my weekly goals and projects list. This is something that I check as I'm doing my weekly review. Um, and then what I do is once an, uh, um, once something is finished on this list, I will simply go in here and I will choose um, a pen and let's get a little bit bigger nib and let's go with uh, a brighter color. And we will come in here and like I said, I have already honed my knives. So I'll just come over here in this little box and I'll just put a circle. That means that's done. I've done my cutting boards, that's done. The gutters were checked. Uh, so that was done before all of this, um, you know, snow that we're getting. We have about six inches of snow that fell last night. Um, it is beautiful and I am taking advantage of the fact that I don't have to be out in that uh, and I'm getting some things done, which is great. Okay. All right. So that's how I mark that things were finished. And um, as I go from year to year and I will copy this forward and take it to uh, next year and I'll just go through and clean out all those little dots. Okay. If I want to, I can also make little notes here. Uh, you know, I can write something here next to it. I could put a date next to it if I wanted to, um, so that I could remember actually when it was done, if it's that important to me. Um, all of those things are possible. So if I want to say in here that, you know, I did this on the 11th, I can say that and so on and so on. Okay. All right. So you see here, as we go from January, February, March on down, some of our lists are smaller, uh, specifically, you know, April, May, and June, they tend to be smaller amounts because I'm doing a lot of things outside in the garden. So I try to get a lot of my indoor home maintenance things done, uh, in the winter time, things like, uh, repainting, you know, touching up walls, painting windowsills, that kind of thing. Uh, I like to wash my windows. Uh, like you see here in June, I like to wash my windows as I go through my zone cleaning. So week one is the entryway in the dining room. So I'll do the windows, you know, beside the door and the two big windows in the dining room. Then we move into uh, zone two, uh, which is the bathrooms. And so I will do the bathroom windows. Zone three is the kitchen. I don't have any windows in my kitchen, but I do have lots of windows in my sunroom. So that's when those get done and the back door as well. And again, moving through those zones, zone four is the bedroom. So the bedroom windows get done. Uh, and then zone five is the living room and the four windows that are in the living room get done. Okay. So if I do it on a, on my zone cleaning, it only takes me a little, uh, short amount of time to do the interior windows. Uh, and then the exterior windows can get done when the house is cleaned on the outside with the power washer and that kind of thing. Okay. All right. Let's see anything else that's special. Oh, here's a section where, uh, last year I made a note about, uh, the, the, uh, paint that I did, uh, last year I did the stairwells. I did the fireplace area and I did the family room, uh, widget cells. So that was the, the, uh, amount of paint that I touched up in August of last year. Okay. All right. Let's see. Actually, I can move that down. So it goes down here with the touch up the paint. Okay. All right. So I think having a list like this is very helpful. Uh, it has been helpful for me. Uh, and you know, um, it's amazing how we just go through these cycles of life and, you know, seasons come and seasons change. And one of the things that got me started about this is, uh, I have a friend of mine, whose husband always took care of these things. And unfortunately her husband passed away. And my friend was like, I don't know what to do around the house. He always took care of that stuff. And so that really got me thinking about, you know, we really do need to write down the things that need to be done, uh, so that everybody has an idea of what needs to go into, uh, taking care of the house because, 
uh, you know, none of us are going to live forever. And we do want to make sure that that information is passed along to our loved ones. So coming up with a list like this, I thought was a great idea. All right. Uh, well, there's only one more thing that I wanted to show you uh, about this um, yearly home maintenance checklist. And, you know, uh, that is the, um, the addition of various links that you can use. So, for example, I showed you my holiday link that I used over here. But I also have a link to my garden list because in February, uh, I have written down prune as needed. And rather than retype out all of the things that need to be pruned in my garden, I simply wrote garden list here and I added a link to that page. Um, and so when I click on that, it goes right to my master gardener list. And I can see here for February, prune damaged branches, prune the fruit trees, um, you know, prune the spirea and the roses and the hydrangeas. So I can see right away exactly what needs to be done. Okay. Then if I want to go back to my maintenance list, I can simply hit the back button and there you go. Okay. All right. Well, uh, a short and sweet video today about something that's very important, your yearly home maintenance list. I am sure that there are things that I have forgotten on this list. That's part of why I enjoy having it as a table so that I can go back in and add things as they come up or as we add new things to our home uh, that might need to be maintained. Okay. Well, thanks for watching today. I hope I have inspired you to create your own home maintenance checklist for yourself and your family. And if you think there's something that's missing from my list, go ahead and leave it below. Uh, you know how much I love learning from you guys. And until next time, here's hoping that you can live a more organized and simplified life through better planning. I use OneNote. Until next time, take care. Okay, bye.